This is English shorthand dictation number 200 and the dictation speed is 160 words per minute. Ready? Start. Sir, I am very glad that my honorable friend has brought forward this adjournment motion which enables the government to place before the house the facts with regard to the paper situation in this country. Sir, in the speeches that have been delivered in this house, some very harsh things have been said about the government. The government is accused of being careless, of being selfish of having no consideration for the educational institutions of this country. I merely propose to place before the House the facts as they are, the reasons which led the government to issue this order, the steps that the government has taken in order to ease the situation immediately and for the future. Sir, I would like to begin by pointing out to the House that there appears to be a certain misunderstanding about the nature of the order which has been issued by the government member after member has risen in this house to suggest that the order passed by the government in fact means that the government claims 90 percent of the paper production for itself i would like to tell the house that that is a complete misunderstanding the order passed by the controller of paper is not a requisition order it is an order which in turn says that the manufacturers of paper shall be bound to hand over to the government 90% of the paper that they produce. The order is what I may call a freezing order and I want to tell the house that the difference that I am making is a real difference. It is not a difference without distinction because the order tells the paper maker that they shall not sell more than 10% of their production to the public. It does not in turn say that they shall deliver 90% of the paper to the government. I think that is a very fundamental and a very real distinction which the house should bear in mind. The second point which I want the house to bear in mind is that the order is served on the paper mills. It is not served on the stockists who have a large number of stocks of paper already in their go-downs. Secondly, it is still possible for the public to satisfy its requirements by getting such paper as is still available in the stocks which have been stored and holded by stockists before the order was passed. The third thing which I wish to remind the house about this order is that it is possible under the order as it is framed for the controller of paper to permit the mills to sell more than 10 percent there is no bar there is no impediment no obstacle placed if the controller of paper notwithstanding the order that has been passed on the 5th november finds that it is possible for him to release for public consumption more than 10 percent of the paper it is still open to him to do so having explained to the house what is actually involved in the order issued by the government i would like to apprise the house of the immediate circumstances which compelled the government to pass this order. Briefly, the facts are these. In the first six months, that is, from April to September, our demand for paper, which is put forth by the Central Stationery Office, amounted to 34,000 tons. It was found that the mills had already delivered about 16,000 tons of paper to the government on behalf of the Central Stationery Office. The House will bear in mind that we had entered into a contract with the paper mill for supplying us 26,000 tons. If the honorable members enter into a little arithmetic, it will be found that as a result of our calculations for the first six months, it was found that we had only 9,000 tons to get under our contract from the paper mills and had to run six months yet. Consequently, what the government did was this. The government revised its estimate in the light of the circumstances that had been disclosed during the previous six months. The second thing that the government did was to consolidate the method of requisitioning paper. Here, I would like to tell the House that before the order was passed, there were two methods by which demands for paper on behalf of the government were put forth. One way was the Central Stationery Office demand for 
which was a demand on behalf of the central government and the provinces of Bengal, Assam and the North West Frontier Province and the Central Provinces. The other was the non-central stationary office demand made on behalf of the provinces which presented their demands independently of the central stationary office. Then there were Indian states, security printing, supply department and non-state railways. It was found that these two independent methods of requisitioning paper for the government created a great deal of difficulty in arriving at an accurate estimate of the total demand for paper and consequently the first step that was taken was to consolidate these two channels of demand into one single channel and the whole matter is now concentrated in the hands of the central stationary office. As I told the house previously when the situation was found to have grown somewhat perilous on account of the excessive use of paper and practically overdrawing over the contract amount, we revised the estimates and centralized the demands. On the basis of the production of the mills during that year, it was calculated that the mills would produce 48,000 tons during October and March. It will be found that the government demand of 42,000 tons represented 87% of the mills production during the six months. Roughly it was 90% and that is the reason why the order maintained 90% as the figure. Now the house will understand why it became necessary in November to issue this order. I want to tell the House the measures that the government has taken in order to increase production of paper. Of course, as the House will realize it is not possible for the government to help the paper mills in the importation of additional machinery in order to enable them to increase their production. The difficulty of shipping is quite well known and it is quite beyond the powers of the government to do anything in the matter. Consequently, we have to work out whatever we can to increase the production of paper within the means which are available to us. I would like to draw the attention of the house to three things which the government has done and which could be usefully referred to as measures taken to increase production. The government has appointed a paper production officer whose duty it is to find out ways and means by which production of paper could be increased. Secondly, the government has cut out non-essential luxury variety of paper and has restricted the government requirements to only a few easily manufactured standard qualities. Thirdly, the government has been dealing with each mill separately to find out what sort of paper each particular mill having regard to its machinery and its equipment can produce to the largest extent. It is estimated at present that as a result of the measures taken to increase production, the increase would be about 12,000 tons. The next thing that the government has done in order to ease the situation is to impose cuts, arbitrary cuts on the demands of the various departments made for paper. Now I would like to tell the house what these cuts are. Provincial and state requirements have been cut down arbitrarily by 10% which gives a saving of 950 tons. Secondly, so far as the central government is concerned, the original estimates for paper presented by the various departments which spend paper have been revised and cut down to an appreciable extent. As the house will notice, the original estimates of the departments to which I have referred came to 34,000 tons, while the revised estimates come to 28,000 tons. The House will be pleased to notice that by the cut imposed on the provincial and Indian state requirements, a saving has been effected of 950 tons. Add to that 12,000 tons obtained by revising the estimates of the different departments and the total comes to 12,950 tons. Now compare this in the light of the paper that is consumed in India. There are no exact figures, not nor is it possible to obtain any exact figures. But the government has shown the approximate figures that the annual consumption of paper in India was about 1 lakh of tons. For 6 months it comes to 50,000 tons. As the house will remember, 10% of that is already left to the public under the orders issued by the controller of printing. That gives the public 5,000 tons. I was going to refer next to the measures that we have taken in order to avoid waste 
list. As my time is up, I do not wish to go into those details. I can send them to the press if that is the view of the house. The next thing that I would like to mention in the house is what we propose to do for the next year. For the next year, the estimate is about 70,000 tons, out of which we have fixed the quota of every department which needs paper.